Hello and welcome in. I'm Lance Lunner and I'm here with Amarillo businessman Alex Fairley. Alex, as we promised in our last visit, uh, we would come back and discuss about the lawsuit, a win or lose. That was our policy that you made against the city over the non-voter approved anticipation tax notes, you know, to fund the uh, renovation of the Civic Center. Uh, but I want to just say I'd remiss uh, in, in the viewership we had of our last visit, uh, overwhelming, and we thank you so much for listening in and tuning in and, and viewing. How's your health? I mean, that's been a topic. Uh, many people, uh, I tell people I'm about ready to interview Alex again, and they want to know how your health is. Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, it's it's uh, much better. Um, yeah, I had a, I had, it's been, t uh, tomorrow is eight weeks. <clears throat> um, and I had a little setback along the way, but uh, it's it's much better. I'm 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 doing good. I I probably need a month to be hopefully kind of normal, but maybe I'm never normal. But <laughs> yeah, it's much better. Thanks. That's fair. That's thanks, fair. Thanks for asking. Okay, I know you can go deep into the legal ease of Judge William Souter's conclusion, you know, in 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 the lawsuit. But in layman terms, like you're talking to Lance Lonert, not one of, an attorney. You're talking to the city of Amarillo and beyond. What happened? Um, I could be just like really, really short and say. No, no, we don't want short. <laughs> That's say, not what I meant. But I'm just saying, I would like. We just want to know in your in your words what happened. What was the conclusion? Yeah, what happened? I mean, we were really so pleased with Judge Souter. Like you know, we didn't know him. My attorneys immediately liked him, um, not knowing him either, because he just was a, we're just gonna do this straight guy. We were really happy that he wasn't from here. There was no ability to influence him. Um, he had no history. But he sent a lot of signals early on. You know, he's retired. And that turned out, I think, to be really positive because he sent out a lot of signals early on that he was invested and digging into this thing and understanding it's very it was very complicated it's very hard to grasp it all and he made why it why was it so hard to grasp because this is my version but because what the city did it was very very complicated like like you had to go to extreme ends illegally to come up with what they tried to do we felt like if he would take the time to dig in that the more he did that the more chance we had of you know, winning. And he, he gave indications early on that he was doing this seriously yeah. and thoroughly. And he took his time. And um, even at the end, after the trial, you know, it took, a, it took a long, kind of a long time to get a decision. Yeah, nine to 10 days, I think it was eventually. And my attorneys were just pleased with every day that went by. They said the longer he takes, the more time he spends, you know, the better we feel. So I, I think overall we had a, 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 a I would say an 80% thorough process, like the city filed the expedited action, right, right. which sped it up. Right. We ended up having enough time. Had we had two more months, there would have there was there was much more there. But we obviously had enough time, and it was overwhelmingly definitive. All like right. I, so give us some details of it, though. I mean, well, here's dig, I can, dig in. I can tell you what happened in, you know, in three minutes. Like we had a we had a city. Council and you think this was very calculated their oh. actions. Oh I could not overstate how calculated it was. So let me let me tell you in layman's terms. What yes. happened. So They decided they were going to raise this money without asking taxpayers and But there were a couple problems with it like the, the in tax notes You could only borrow money for seven years. Okay. Well to borrow money that much money for seven years You have to double the property tax rate the, the last payment in those seven years was as much as we collect in property taxes. So you'd have to double the rate. And that was okay because they never intended to leave the tax notes in place. Once they had the debt on the books, they could refinance it with an instrument that they also don't have to ask taxpayers about and spread it out to 30 years. And that would make us you know, kind of be able to afford it. But they were doing it, like no matter what, they were doing it. And then they had another problem though. On May 24th in that city council meeting, they never told anyone about a seven-year note. They just showed a 30-year payout. They, they absolutely did that. Um, you couldn't have done that accidentally. 
But, and, and then you have someone like Cole raise his hand and say, I don't understand. Like, could we, we're talking about $260 million. million yeah. we're, mm -hmm. we're talking about almost doubling the city's debt burden. Could we talk about this a little bit? And they say, oh, no, 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 we got to hurry. Like, we, don't, we don't have time to talk about it. We got to hurry. They didn't want people to know what went on. They misled people in that meeting. They misled people in the agenda and the minutes to, and, and the notice of that, according to Judge Souter, not me anymore. But they had another problem with this plan. And that was that there's a law in Texas, it's called Senate Bill 2, that you can't raise taxes more than 3.5% without getting voter approval. But there's two sides to every city's budget, a maintenance and operations side, which is most of it, and then there's a interest and sinking fund side. On the interest and sinking fund side, you don't have to, you don't have this three and a half percent limit. Okay. Uh -huh. And this project belonged on the MNO, the maintenance and operation side. And so they had to figure out a way to get rid of that limit because they weren't going to go ask taxpayers. They had already yeah. asked them and they said, no, they, didn't, they weren't going there again to get this project over onto this side. Mm -hmm. And they found a way to do it. And that was, they found out that if the project was in a tiers project, right. that it could sit on the INS side, on the interest side, and no one, it would have no limit. And so what they did, they went to the tiers board two weeks before they were gonna pass this $260 million tax note that they, they knew and had planned. And they went to the tiers board and said, hey, we need to put this civic center project in the tiers project plan. Didn't tell them why, didn't tell them they were gonna plan to raise 206. And the tiers board said, okay, seems okay, but like, why? Didn't why? They, why, didn't, why didn't the tiers board challenge it more? They asked them, they said, okay. kind of what are we were doing? And an assistant city manager gave him this passing, general, misleading, ah, we're just, you know, just kind of helps us take advantage of a couple things. Didn't tell them in three, in two weeks, we're going to pass $260 million debt that no one gets a say in. And then we'll refinance that so we have 30 years because we, we can't pay $260 million off in seven, seven years. Seven years, yeah. And they, when they did that, they thought, ah, we got it over here. Now we don't have this 3.5% limit. So if we got to raise taxes 50%, it's no problem. Nobody can do anything about it. To say it was calculated is utterly an understatement. When we found the tears issue, it was a surprise in the bond hearing. It came up in the bond, whether I had to put up a bond, it came up in that as a surprise at the end. And we couldn't figure out how they were gonna get around this three and a half percent issue. And at the very end of that, they just threw that out there, hadn't briefed it, hadn't told anybody about it. And it caught us by surprise. And I asked my attorneys that day, I said, did, is that a problem? Like, it's over there now in this don't have to limit it. And my attorneys, here's what they said, literally, here's what they said. They said, Alex, we don't know. We have to go research it, but we can tell you this. Any time an attorney brings a surprise that he hasn't briefed the judge on and hadn't already made his arguments, which is how lawsuits work, there's usually something hidden. Hmm. And so they said, we're not gonna panic. Three weeks later, they called me on a Saturday and said, oh boy, you're not gonna believe what we found out of this tears <laughs> thing. Yeah. And so it was, it was, it was very calculated as a, it's a very good These word. These are people we work with, we know, citizens of Amarillo on this board. Why do you think they did this, Alex? Why would they try to dupe us like this? <sighs> so I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna in a, be- In a personal way, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna be, candid with part of this, but I'm be careful with part of it. I'm not gonna pine on why the mayor did it. Oh, that's fair, um, like, that's fair. I will say this, I don't believe that Eddie and Frida, and certainly not Cole, because he said, I don't understand, can we talk about it? I don't think the rest of them understood what was happening. I think they were all told, we vetted it, it's legal, don't worry, it's okay. But I can tell you, in our depositions, it became very clear. They, those people didn't know what was going on. They just were following. So I don't think they thought they were duping anybody. Okay. I don't believe that. So I would, I, I don't let them off the hook, but but it's for a different reason that they, they had an obligation to figure that out. When Cole raised his hands, those three should have stuck up for him and said, no, 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 no. He, he gets the right to understand this. So, but I, I don't think those people were duping anybody. I gotcha, I gotcha. Obviously, Mayor Ginger Nelson, as we've talked about already, uh, had some comments afterward uh, on, on, the, on the decision of the lawsuit. 
One of them, I want to say this accurately, she thought that they were working within the bounds of the state law provided for issuing debt. Why would she say that if it was just ruled against basically that exact thing? Yeah, you're, um, again, you're asking me to figure out what's in her head. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that I, 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 that's just not a credible statement. Like, it, 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 it just can't yeah, that's be. That's straight from it. Like, like you, 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 you know, I, I think another thing she said was we need to appeal because we need some clarification. Listen, they understand the law like nobody on the planet. To come up with what they came up with, you have to utterly understand the law. Yeah. You couldn't come up with, with this thing that moved from this to this and first did this and all this, all this stuff they didn't tell people. Like it was so orchestrated and organized and so, to say we need some clarification, it's just not believable. So why they did, I have a couple thoughts. I think they would love not to pay my legal fees back. I think they'd love me to wait. I do think there's some personal that's coming here. I, I think the mayor is frustrated by somebody who stood up and said, I, I'm yeah. not going for this. I was gonna ask you that. Now you're pinned with costing Amarillo all this extra money, things like that, Alex, uh, because of your decision to uh, to challenge what was going on. Have you so, heard that? I haven't heard well, that. Well, yeah. I mean, it basically, it's like because of this lawsuit. You mean the legal fees? No, I'm not, I'm not talking legal fees at all. I'm talking about like now we may not get to build a civic center because ah, it costs ah, too ah, much. Ah. Things like that. That is tagged to Alex Fairley. Yeah. You only can believe that if you believe that the plan they have was a good plan. Man, let me tell you something. In 2020, when we voted for Prop A, nobody right. knows this. That plan was nothing but pictures on a piece of paper. They had never costed that. Garfield said to do all this, you need 500 million. Back in 2020, they said we need 300. Like things didn't go from 300 to 500 in two years. That plan was, it wasn't a real plan. It was just pretty pictures. I, I think there may be a way to make a good plan, yeah. but it wouldn't look, want to talk it about wouldn't that look like bit. that. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so as we move forward in this, Alex, uh, this is, and this is a serious question for me. We need something in Amarillo, okay? And, and I'm talking Civic Center now. I'm not talking about the policy and the lawsuit. We need something in Amarillo that is, a, that is, that is, that is just not working right now. Do you have an answer? Do you have a, a suggestion? Yeah, I, I, I think I would say two things. I think I first would go back to our last conversation you know, there's a group of people in Amarillo who, you know, they chose to die on this hill. Like, like, they were doing this no matter what. The mayor called multiple people and said, look, I know this is gonna be very unpopular, but we just gotta do it anyway. She said that to some of those city council people. She said it to multiple people, and the mentality was, I don't care, I'm getting this done. And, you know, the first thing I, the first thing I think I would say about that question is I, I proposed a solution. I said to these people who, you know, one of them said to me, I know the mayor, what the mayor did was wrong, but I don't care, it helps my business. To those people who have the money, I said, let's, let's pay, let's pay. I'll, I'll lead. I haven't heard from those people. Right. I, I, I have heard one of those people say, they didn't say it to me, I don't even know if the Civic Center is a top five issue anymore. Wow. So when you finally come and say, hey, guys, let's get together and get our checkbooks out and pay for this thing that you are willing to do illegal things and defend illegal things, yeah. according to Judge Souter, not me, Yeah. all of a sudden now, no one kind of wants to talk about it. So and what do you think the mayor's motivation is, Alex, behind wanting this Civic Center so bad at no matter what cost it is to the citizens of Amarillo? You kind of asked me this three times, Lance. I know, and, listen, and I'm I would trying love, to get an answer. I would love to answer it because I have an opinion, <laughs> but it goes to motive and intent, and I just... You don't want to go there? I, I just can't judge the mayor's right. motives. Okay. I, I, I think in some cases I know what they aren't. I, she doesn't need clarification on the law. We just need to follow it. Yeah. But but what it is, I... Listen, I, I think there's a, and we can get into this if you want, but I, I, I think there's a group of people who, who are in control of our city government because they control all the seats on the council, minus one now, but all five 
before Cole got on and for now. And I think she walks into that chamber every vote and knows she's got three people that are voting with her. And I don't think anybody's thinking. I don't think they're discussing. I don't think they're asking questions. That's what gets you here. Like, like, like if, listen, if we had a mayor that would say, look, I want this anyway. I don't care what the voters said. And it's $260 million and I want all you guys to pay for it, even though it's good for these 15 people that are kind of in my camp. That would be disappointing, but like, okay, if we had a healthy city council and she walked into that council and knew she had to convert all the other people. Yeah. But she walks into that council and she, she knows she, she's probably not going to convert Cole. Everyone else doesn't have to be converted. They're following her. And I, I, when I say that, just go back over the last five years and count the number of 5-0 votes. You know, since May 2021, they're all 4-1 votes. But, yeah. man, that's not natural. Five people don't agree 99% of the time. And so the unhealthy thing isn't that if we have a mayor that would just do something anyway, no matter what. Why? You have to ask her that. The unhealthy thing is that we have a council that's, in my opinion, controlled by, by a group of people, including the Amarillo Matters Political Action Committee, and those people, they're, 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 they know what they got to do, and they know what they got to do to get elected again. And we got to fix that next May. All right. I mean, that's up to the voters. You know what I mean? That's, that's, your, that's your opinion right there. Real quick, this costs you some friendships, I'm sure. It's cost you some money. Has it been worth it? Yeah. That's it. I don't, I, I. Because you're standing on policy, in your opinion. This is not about a civic center anymore. No, it's not about a civic center. I wouldn't say I'm standing on policy. I, I would say I'm standing on principle. Principle? Okay. Principle, like, principle, like, you know, like, you know, we're really talking about, Lance, we're really talking about freedom. Like, it's, it's how this country got built. Like, could someone across the pond say, this is how you're doing things. This is how you're going to worship. This is how you're going to be taxed. Like, it's principle. It's like truth. And we just got to decide. The person that said to me, I know it was wrong, but it's okay because it benefits me. That's not principle. No. And if you believe something, then you believe it like every time. You got to decide if you're living life on principle or circumstance. And circumstance says, oh, it's wrong, but it helps me right now. So I'm kind of, we, we can't run a country or a city like that, in my opinion, unless we're just okay with chaos. Alex, there's still a lot of talk about what's going on at the Civic Center. And, you, you know, obviously you've been tapped into this from day one. What, what can we do down there? What can we do downtown Amarillo? What would you like to see? What would be the best solution for Amarillo? So I, I, would, say, I would say two things. In light of what we've been through for the last five months and really, really kind of two years, the end answer has to be, we can only do what Amarilloans want to do. So I know that's not what the answer is, but in, in light of the fact that we, we tried to go around them and, and didn't care what they thought, yeah. at the end of the day, we have to do what Amarilloans want to do. And if Amarilloans don't want to do anything, like we can't come up with something that the majority want to do, then we just have to follow them. And we just can't, in, in whatever discussion, we can't lose sight of that because we almost did until Judge Souter refocus the camera but here's what i would do if i was if someone said come on let's get to work i would go all the way back to the beginning and i would start over so do we have to wait till there's a new council to see who amarillo wants in those seats i think we do like th like this project is over we don't need to look for a city council that will build a building or won't build a building like whatever you think we gotta we gotta try to elect a city council that won't say we don't care. We know better. We're doing it anyway. We don't care about all you folks. We have to correct that. If we, and until we do, there's no possible healthy discussion about what we ought to do in any part of town, in my opinion. Do you want to be on that council? No. Why not? Uh, <laughs> I've, you, know, there, you, you know, there's a lot of talk and social chatter about... Mayor, mayor. mayor. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, that's a fair question. I mean, yeah. we talked about it last time as well. I think it's a fair question, Alex. I mean, you're passionate, obviously, in this discussion. You're v well versed in it. You're well researched in it. Lance, I, 
I don't want to be the mayor. Okay. I, mean, I, I just. All right. I, I, I'm going to tell you, it's a very, it's kind of a selfish, it's a kind of a selfish statement. Like, my my percentage of wanting to be the mayor is on a scale of one to a hundred, it's like one. All right. Okay. My percentage of wanting to run for anything in the traditional sense where you got to run around and say, hey, I'm great, I'm smart, you know, vote for me, I'm I'm so successful. That that's a like a minus. 100. <laughs> like, I just could never do that in a traditional way. It's just, and so, and so I haven't told people that I'm not, and, and I'm not saying yet that I'm not, because there's a scenario, honestly, where I would consider it. But I, I do not want that to play out. I'm not going to talk about what it is. Okay. Um, it goes back to this discussion that we had about, you know, we have a we have a small group of people who are in control of our city council votes right now. And in my opinion, we got to change that. I am in that fight. Okay. Like, I will be in that fight. I don't know what my role ultimately will be. And, and, and I'm committed to it to become almost anything. But I don't, I don't want to be the mayor. So it, it, when that fight begins, how, how can we know that we're putting the proper people in as a voter of Amarillo? In your opinion. I mean, how, how can we learn that? Because we do see the... The name recognition or, you know, all the signs that will be out, vote for so-and-so, you know, blah, blah, well, blah. Well, Lance, first how, of all. How can we figure that out? How can we get the proper people in there? First of all, you said something really important. I don't think you knew that. You know, noticed it. <laughs> but you you got to give me a little you credit. You said when the fight begins. Yeah. Like, it's a, this is an issue. It is an issue. No, here's the issue. What? The fight has begun. Okay. Emerald when it matters is a pack. Has been planning who the next mayor is going to be for eight months now. I have sat with some of the people they're trying to recruit. They, are, they have no intentions of not giving up control of the city. So the fight, now the, the, the good thing for them and the bad thing for our community is that fight's been going for a long time and nobody knows there's a fight. Yeah. So you know what that means? This side's losing that fight. They don't know there's a fight. And in fact, most people don't know that they're, they're a pack. Most people don't know what they said to me five years ago when they came and asked me to join them and asked me to give them money, which I declined to do, and then asked me to come to the monthly Thursday meeting where this group of people get together and said, Would you, we want you to come and be a part of this group. I said, what are we doing? They said, we're getting control of our city. And I said, I'm not into control. First of all, I don't, I, I, I don't think there's but one being in the universe that's in control. And I follow him, mm -hmm. and it ain't me. And it ain't a pack, and it's not the mayor. So any pursuit of that to me, it's, it's just misguided. They're picking people that they're gonna support. No one's gonna know that they were handpicked. Cole's a great example of the opposite. Cole went to them at their request, not his. They sat him down, first question, what, who'd you vote for Prop A? And Cole said, look, let me stop you. I don't, I don't want your endorsement. I wouldn't take it if you gave it to me. Nobody's gonna own me. And they had invited him because they wanted to, they liked him. They, they wanted to endorse him. But you know what they really want? They, they want to control him. That's what's going on in those four one votes and th those first four years of 5-0, mostly 5-0 votes. We, you know what we need? We need, we need five more Coles. Yeah, okay. I, I don't even know what Cole thinks about most things. But Cole will go in there and ask questions, not, not just to be irritating or whatever. Cole's like, well, wait, 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 could we think about this? He's just a strong person. He can stand up against people that ridicule him and make fun of him and tell him he's inexperienced. He doesn't care. And we need five people. We don't need five people to come together that agree with Cole or with Alex or with anybody, and certainly not Amarillo Matters. Yeah. We need five people who are smart and have time, and they need to have some business acumen, and they need to have integrity, and they need to be willing to, to do the right thing every time, no matter what it costs them. So with this passion you have, I challenge you this, Alex, okay, with this question. When you know it's that wolf in sheep's clothing, okay, are you gonna, are you gonna say it out loud to us so we know as voters? By that I mean that person that they're trying to shove in as mayor who they can manipulate? Yeah, you know, I don't wanna predict what I'll say, but I'll say it right now. If someone comes to the table and they're endorsed by Emerald Matters, and there's a, there's, there's a couple few lined up right now, they just haven't told people, they had discussions about 
Are we, are we on the same page, same page? And listen, they have every right to. It's not illegal. It's right. just that most of Amarillo doesn't know that there's this plan before they go in. Any person who, who comes into off, who runs for office that are endorsed by Amarillo Matters, it may be a great person. They may be fine. I'm not saying they're bad, but you have to ask the question, do you own your opinions or do the leadership of Amarillo Matter own your opinions? Because if the answer is they do, that person, we have that right now. We got to get rid of that. And so I'm saying it now to that degree. What I'll say in the future, it just depends how things play out. I think you can tell I'm with the guy who, who, who is tired of being governed by people who say, oh, you, you elected me. I, I, you just should be okay that I do what I want. Like, I, like yeah. I'm with that group of people. That's and me. so as that plays out, yeah, I'm going to speak up, but not in the sense that Amarillo Matters has. Like, we, we don't need to elect a bunch of people who agree with me. We just need to elect strong. And listen, there's a group of those people that are coming together. Like, I've talked to several of them, and they're, some of them don't agree with each other, but right. they're good people. They're strong people. They're not going to be owned by anybody. Amarillo Matters, me, anybody. And I'm, I'm going to be vocal in that process. I got to ask you one last thing here with that civic center. I know I keep going back to that. First of all, you're not against something like improving downtown in that way, are you? No, I, I would love us to find a way to do something downtown. I think there's something possible that we could afford and it could be amazing for our community and we could, you know, we could, we could get done a lot of, uh, you know, I think it could be on the level of Hodgetown. I think most of Amarillo thinks that's been great. I think we could, do that again and I think it would be great but I, I don't think if we don't do that we're just like this clunky city okay. so so I would yeah I would like to but I'm not again Emeril has to want to it doesn't matter what one person or ten people or a hundred people want to do we we gotta we gotta we gotta listen to Amarilloans Alex uh, I'll, I'll leave it open question here you have anything else you want to add I think that's plenty, Lance. <laughs> Until next time, I think that was plenty. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Lance Leonard, and this has been Alex Fairley, and uh, I, I appreciate your opinions. Uh, he's speaking what's from his heart, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this today. I know I did. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Lance.